Welcome everybody to the Healing Place podcast. I'm your host Terry Wellbrock and just wanted to talk to you for a moment before the show. I'm very excited about today's episode. Uh, you'll find out why for those who have listened into previous episodes about my journey over this past, gosh, year and one month. Um, yes, what a fabulous conversation uh, is coming up on healing um, and so much more energy work. And anyway, I'm so excited for you guys to tune in. Uh, but this week I have been doing a podcast seminar and wow, have I learned a lot. So going to be adding some amazing series. I had already, even before doing the seminar, uh, reached out to some healers here on Hilton Head Island in South Carolina, where I live and wanted to do a Healers of Hilton Head series. So that will be coming up um, along with some other series uh, and just adding some, just some more perks for listeners, for all of you. This show again continues to blossom globally, 114 countries now and the top 2.5% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts, thanks to you. And I just giving you all big giant hugs of gratitude. And so I just want to continue to offer even more healing strategies and um, ideas and options for you. So that's all coming along. I know I had touched, talked about um, working with a previous podcast guest on some coaching services. So that's coming up. Just a lot of wonderful things in the work works to, uh, to help all of you, whether you're a trauma warrior on your own healing journey or a trauma advocate helping others along their healing journeys, I just am going to start again offering um, even more resources to help you help you reach that place of healing. So, all right, such a great episode coming up now. Thanks. Welcome everybody to the Healing Place podcast. I am your host, Terry Welbrock, and my heart is happy to have Holly Copeland here with me today. And she is a coach, biofield tuning practitioner, which I'm excited to learn about, uh, and a meditation teacher. So welcome, Holly. Thank you, Terry. I'm so excited to be here today. Yes, me too. We, we had a little introduction. Someone we both know introduced us, and then it was just kind of an instant connection on something we have in common. And um, I, I told you before we hit record, I feel like I already know you as a friend. So, <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So talk to us a little bit about what, I'm so curious, let's just dive right into what is biofield tuning practitioner? Yeah, biofield tuning is a modality that was uh, created by Eileen McCusick, and she was the sound healer who used tuning forks on the body. And one day, about 20 years ago, when working with a client, discovered that she could feel the vibrations in the field with the fork. And this led her to ex be really curious because she's a researcher and a scientist too, and started working in the field. And, you know, years later, she's got two books and developed a whole method of working in the field with forks. And what I like to explain is that, you know, we have a auric field or a bio field around the body because the body is all energy and vibration. And it's like our mind lives on outside the body as vibration in the field. So any trauma or challenge you've had in your life gets stored as a vibration in the field, which means that if you've had a trauma, that trauma is stored vibrationally in the field. And tuning forks have the ability to, to detect that, that vibration and it sounds it feels like a, a resistance in the field when I bring a fork into it. And when I bring in a fork into that resistance, uh, the body, which wants to heal, because the body is always trying to heal and get better, hears that resonant vibration and starts to be like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be. That's where I'm supposed to be at, not this raw feeling. And it starts to heal. It starts to literally tune up to what's there and that releases whatever you know that 
I don't know, depression or sadness or whatever that was caused often in childhood by, you know, some event that then gets triggered over and over again in our body, that actually starts to resonate and affect the organs in our body. The, you know, clients will have felt sensations of feeling the sadness and then feeling it open and release. And so this process is just kind of systematically walking through the field, searching for resistance, searching for dissonance, and allowing the body and the forks to have a conversation to tune up and heal. It's kind of as simple as that. That's so beautiful. I literally got a little teary-eyed for a second because it so just touched in my heart that I so, one, want to do it. <laughs> And two, I was like, I wonder if you could do this without being near the body. <laughs> like, could you do it through Zoom? <laughs> yes, you can. Oh my God. Yes. Yes, because of the quantum field, because yeah. the time and space don't really truly exist because we can use our intention. I work with clients all over the world um, through Zoom. And I have a massage table that I lay out in my room and I set out the body demarking. I use crystals, but it could be rocks. It could be anything. And um, just with my intention, put the hologram on the table and the client listens in on Zoom and I work with them remotely and it totally works. I, it absolutely, I mean, I've done both in person and you know, plenty of in-person and um, distant sessions. And truly, as much as I love being in person with people, energetically, I can tell there's no difference. Right. It, 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 it works equally well. Now, Eileen says that too. And I totally agree with her in my own experience now. Right. I yeah. just think that's it's so beautiful. Well, and I, again, I've just learned so much through the years. And I had a little girl once say to me when I was working in a mental health agency in the school systems, and um, she just stopped and looked at me and she said, you have a white light that glows around you. And I was like, oh, like that was so sweet of you. But the fact that she like saw this energy and this aura around me, I just was like so touched by that. Um, yeah, and that was like kind of my, my first really taste with that. And that was years and years ago. And then the more I've learned and learned and learned just about energy and what you said about time and space. I mean, that's a big part of it as well is yeah. like trauma. I mean, we talk a lot on this show about trauma and adverse childhood experiences and uh, how trauma doesn't know time. If so, if, so if a body memory comes up or you're triggered in some way, you're back in that moment. It, it doesn't understand that you're not really in that moment in time, but it takes you like that's where you are. In the right. If we memory. get. Yeah, if we get bit by a dog and that, you know, and that trauma is stored there, the dogs are scary. And then you see a dog and that's, you know, it's, it's like that exact feeling is right back, right? It's yeah. there in that moment. So in order to heal from that, we have to go back to when it was created and start to unravel and unwind those early experiences um, and, you know, uh, correct those vibrations, bring them back into harmony and resonance. And then we'll start to be able to heal from, from the trauma and other, of course, many modalities work at that level. Biofield tuning is just another one. And I'm uh, a musician and come from a musical family. And so just tuning forks speak to me. They're so simple. It's they're elegant and um, they work. Uh, yeah. they, they work. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, did you, were you in this field or did you get led to this field after you went through your own healing journey? I got led to it. So yeah, no, I, so I, my background is as a scientist. I was a conservation scientist um, with the nature conservancy for 20 years and thought that I would, that, you know, I thought for a while that would be my career and in my healing journey and um, some other soul searching, I recognized that actually, no, I was meant to do something else. And so yeah. this is a second career. I mean, I, this is a full like 180 degree second you know, turn <laughs> right. into a completely different career. I, uh, Terry, I wrote 20 research papers on sage grouse and mule deer and uh, book chapters all in the scientific, you know, field of ecology. Um, you know, yeah. so this is about that all changed about four years ago. Yes. Now, are, are you comfortable talking about what we both have in common and, and what you went through and then how, how that led you to this? 
Totally. I love to share my story because it awesome. might help somebody. Yeah. yeah. So um, in that journey four years ago, um, in 2019, March of 2019, I woke up one morning with um, like bags under my eyes and red kind of puffy face and just like just totally inexplicably that was it was like literally one morning I woke up to this and I was like what's wrong you know was it the glass of wine I had last night or what was it and that was a you know basically the beginning of a two-year journey to figure out what what was making me sick and it was very mysterious like nothing really had happened and then of course that was the first morning and then it continued and every it was just like I would wake up and I would kind of it seemed to be worse at night. So I, it would kind of get better during the day, but then I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up and it would be, I should have gotten a clue and you'll understand what right. I reveal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would go to sleep and I'd wake up and my eyes would just be, you know, and I'm a healthy person and I eat good food, organic, fresh, whole food. And I use organic products, you know, I try not to use chemicals. So I was doing all those things to keep like a low you know, healthy life. And so this was really perplexing. And uh, the other pattern was that I would leave the house and I would go on work trips frequently and I'd get inexplicably better. And then I'd come home and it would get worse. So I had this clue early on, it was something in my house, but I really had no idea. And um, about six months into it, when I was still like, what's wrong and trying all these different things, maybe it was about four months in, four or five months in, I had a conversation with a family friend who was a toxicologist and he did about a 45 minute call with me. And about halfway in, he said, I think you have mold poisoning. I think this is mold. And I'm like, what? I live in Wyoming in a dry climate. What are you talking about? He goes, well, your symptoms sound like mold. It's, it shows up in all different ways. It's really strange, but it just, that's what it sounds like. He was the first person that really got me thinking about that. And then we did all these things. We like got mold detect, like error detectors. My husband actually was a air quality specialist. So we bought the equipment to do our own testing. Um, we found traces of it, but it wasn't like a super red flag. But by then, as I started to read about it, I was convinced he was probably right. So then we start tearing out walls and we start tearing out floors because we'd had some water damage from a storm and we're thinking that it's underneath the flooring and all this. And long story short, we couldn't really find any significant mold. And then about eight months into it, when I was still just like, well, where is this mold? I have no idea. And we'd done all the contracting and everything. And I had read somewhere on the internet that there could be mold in the bed. And it never occurred to me, but I came back from a camping trip and it happened again. And that was the, the obvious was when I would leave and come back and it would be yeah. so glaring. And um, I was like, I think we need to get a new bed. I don't know why, but I just do. So we did. And when we were putting, taking the old bed out, um, we had to take it apart in order to get it out the door. And when we opened it up, it was an air mattress. It was an air mattress with a foam topping and this was all sewn in so this is nothing you could see on the outside between the air mattress and the foam lining was a vinyl liner and between and that vinyl liner and that and the foam had a giant caking of mold across the whole thing oh my gosh <laughs> holy moly so years it, we'd had it for i think 18 years so just the body heat every night of going to bed and condensing on that vinyl lining, that plastic barrier had created a happy environment for mold. Yeah. And um, who, you know, and my husband. Well, that's what I was right just going to bring up. Yeah. Had the same mold, but he didn't have any visible reactions. Right. I'm sure he was being affected, but just not in the, my body's as I'm sure you know, some people react to mold and some people don't. Then I'm yes. the canary in the coal mine. That right. <laughs> well, and that's what I had read, like 23% of us in the world, which is a quarter of the population, yeah. are susceptible to mold toxicity, meaning our bodies, 
whether it's through there's DNA that can be involved or, you know, weakened immune system, tra traumatic childhoods can have an impact in lowering our immune system ability to, to be able to process those toxins and get them out. And so, um, yeah, you and I are in that 23% group. Woo. Woo. But, you know, I really feel like it's a blessing because even if they're not reacting to it, their bodies are not, it's not good for you to no. be breathing mold in every night, right? right? When you go to sleep or in your house. So we're just the canaries in the coal mine to protect the family. That's how I like to think yeah, of it. Yeah, that's a good way. Yes, yeah. exactly. You know, you know so. well, even our dogs, like our dogs, um, we have a little schnoodle and then Sammy, the Labradoodle, and she, um, Sammy was starting to have some, like her eyes were watering a lot, but, but Max, the little schnoodle, so he's a little guy, he all of a sudden started vomiting blood and pooping blood and oh we took him to the vet and they were like, you know, they checked him for parasites and then, you know, they, oh, we don't find parasites, but we're going to treat him for parasites. And I was like, well, yeah. you know, and at that point you're so desperate. Okay. <laughs> I know right. I should have been like, uh, no, we don't need to treat him if it's negative. So, but right. we were just hoping for some sort of solution. And um, yeah, so even he was experienced, he still has mm -hmm. some allergy issues, like skin issues. Um, we're now yeah. giving him coconut oil and it's helping him more than any medications did. So, um, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then just to kind of sort of complete a little bit of that story, I thought I was home free once I got the mold out, I was like, victory, I'm done. But then what happened was that, um, a couple weeks later, I, um, I, so I was, better in the sense that you know the symptoms started to subside but about two weeks later i was eating a thai peanut sauce some dipping sauce and within about 10 minutes all those same symptoms my face swelling the redness the rash just like came right back and i was like what the yeah <laughs> and what i learned was that now my body was hypersensitized to mold and as I'm sure you know, there's certain foods in our food system that are very moldy. Peanuts are the Peanut. most moldy food in the world, like yeah. in our system. And then and coffee. so that coffee, peanuts, corn, yeah, um, were some of the biggies. And I found corn, like I couldn't eat corn chips, um, couldn't eat anything with peanuts because my body would be like, oh my God, there's mold here, and start to react again. Right. Um and I still don't eat those foods. Um, and because I don't think it's good to get, you know, high amounts of mold in your body, even right. if my body could start to tolerate it. Um, so then there was a long process of detoxing and I did all the things, you know, I did coffee enemas. I did a seven day water fast. I did, um, co used coconut. Um, uh, well, I used various types of, um, you know, detoxing herbs and things like that yeah. um, to clean my liver and clean my intestines. And it was a slow, long process. As I I'm so glad you just said that because I'm in month three of a four month protocol for, for gut because I developed leaky gut. There was just, mm -hmm. there was just so much histamine intolerance. I mean, you know, there's just, you know, yeah. a lot to it. And, um, today I was like, Oh, I so just want to be done with this, but yeah. it's a process. It really is a process of building your immunity strength back up again. And, um, yeah, yeah. just helping your body be stronger. Yeah. I'm yeah. curious, did you get a, a diagnosed with mast cell activation syndrome? Is that a um, my nutritionist brought it up as saying, um, I, I follow, um, Beth O'Hara, which who she does mast cell 360, Mm -hmm. um and has read every blog piece she's ever written and a, her a lot of her work re revolves around um mast cell activation syndrome with histamine intolerance and mold toxicity yeah yeah because i had never heard matt about mcas before this and then a doctor in australia i was working with mentioned treating me like a you know for mast cell activation syndrome and um and so yeah that protocol really really helped um you know and I mean, I'm happy to say that a couple of years later, you know, two, two years later, I'm, 
I mean, pretty, I'm symptom free. You know, it's, it's gone. Yay. <laughs> You're like, uh, give me hope. I'm like, all right, yeah. I, I can do this. <laughs> Although I will say I'm starting to add the foods back in. I, I started going back to EMDR therapy just to help with the mental health because I didn't want to develop food phobias. And yeah. I would stand and look and be like, oh, I so want that, but I'm so afraid to eat it type of yeah. thing. Right. Yeah. Um, totally. But now I'm doing some a couple of higher histamine like i had a half a banana today um but but those medium histamine things and so it's so wonderful to be starting and i'm not having any reactions so i'm like all right all of this protocol is starting to work because i'm not reacting like i used to yeah yeah exactly my throat closing up right oh wow so that's what you yeah yeah so unfortunately i didn't quite have that although at the end before i really understood before i we identified the bed. It was like the rash was just moving down my body, getting worse and worse. It just everything just progressively was getting worse as my body was getting more and more overloaded. Yeah. Um, you know, and I like you, like I'm I'm well, I'm not gonna speak for you, but I and I imagine you might have encountered this, like when I was working through the diagnosis process, like I went to an allergist. And I described my symptoms and told him what this doctor had said, that it was likely mold. And this well-respected allergist said, no, mold can't do that. Yeah. Oh, how many doctors I've been sent to? Let's put a scope down your throat with an ENT and allergist who said the exact same thing. Another very well-renowned one. Another doctor, because I was urinating blood and went to, a, oh, I can't remember what his title was, but he said, well, molds everywhere in South Carolina, you might as well move and just completely blew it off. And I was like, no, you don't understand. Like I have molds toxicity. Like I was poisoned by mold. Yeah. Um, and he, they just didn't want to hear it. I had another doctor tell me, I think we're going to go ahead and give you some anti-anxiety meds. <laughs> I was like, mm, mm. nope, this isn't anxiety related. <laughs> sorry. I mean, yeah. total gaslighting. And so, yeah, I, 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 I totally understand. I'm sorry you experienced that too. Well, I'm sorry you did. I mean, it's just, it's, you, you're left sort of incredulous when you recognize how ignorant that viewpoint is right. and how, um, I mean, once you walk in this world, you're like, oh, there are a lot of people experiencing this mold toxicity and so much misinformation. I mean, for a well-respected doctor to, you know, work in the field of allergy medicine and be able to say to you that mold can't cause those symptoms just blows my mind. Right. I, I don't understand how that viewpoint is even possible today. Yeah. I don't, no, I don't, I don't even understand it either because again, it's, there's so much scientific evidence for it. Um, especially, you know, when I, I had urine stool blood tests done and, you know, from GI stuff to, and it came back with high aspergillus levels, ocrotoxin A and citronin in my body. And when we did the house testing, it was high levels of aspergillus. So I said, yeah. what's in the house? Yeah, is in my body. <laughs> so right. I don't understand how we don't can't correlate the fact that 20 different things happened in my body like crazy, you know, my electrolytes went out of whack, and my vitamin D levels plummeted and my blood pressure went up and like all these things happened at one time, there has to be a root cause, right? Right. Right. It's not just anxiety. It's not just happening. Yeah. And I did that. I failed to mention I did some blood testing too with a naturopath. And that was I, I did that as soon as this doctor, this first doctor told me mold poisoning. I did the, one of the tests with her. I can't remember which one it is, but it's the blood test that you send away. Right. And it came back with very high levels of mold in my blood. And that was what I needed to be, to confirm, yes. to know that he was right. And I just didn't know where it was. Yeah. You know? Oh, I remember having that answer, like that, that feeling of when I looked at the test results and I was like, oh, thank God no, I don't want my family exposed to mold and no, I wish it wasn't mold, but thank God, I at least now have an answer Yeah. to yeah, know yeah. what I'm fighting. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And you can, yeah. you can start to go down the road of figuring it out. What? Right. Yeah. So, right. so, so you then found yourself starting to heal and then how did you, how'd you end up in, in this particular field with the energy healing? Cause again, I'm so fascinated by it. I love it. I just think yeah. it's amazing, amazing work. 
Thank you. You know, so I actually like to say that mold actually sort of saved my life. So this is the funny thing is that the, the dissatisfaction, I was kind of feeling sad about the environment and the planet and sort of in despair about that and my job and feeling burnt out. And, and at the same time that was happening, the mold poisoning was happening. And as I started to heal from the mold, I just really started to feel like I, I started to feel better and like, wow, I really want to feel like this all the time. And it was like, it turned my world on its axis. Like I started to rethink everything because of, I was like given a new lease on life with feeling well. It's funny how I illness said it yesterday. <laughs> I only laugh because I literally said those words yesterday. Like, I feel like I have a new lease, a new understanding of life, a new lease on life. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, and it, and so it just, it was like, it gave me the, the energetic freedom to rethink everything. And, um, and because of that, I decided to leave my job, leave my career as a scientist, because I really just wanted to dedicate my life to helping others feel better, feel better in their bodies, feel better in their minds, um, and heal. And I just didn't want to do anything else. Yes. <laughs> I saw, oh my gosh, I'm like right there with you. I call this my soul work because it, I was truly just, I just am pulled to this to, again, what you just said, helping others, guiding others along their healing journey. Um, yeah. Putting that energy out into the universe to, to help others who are struggling and hurting. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, I couldn't think of anything more fulfilling to do in a better, like that was the gift it gave me was, <laughs> Yeah, no, you thought you were going to be a scientist, but that's not what you're meant to do. <laughs> that, you did that chapter. That was chapter one, and I'm in chapter two. And it's like way, way more awesome than I could have ever imagined. I love what I do every day. And um, and so I started actually by coaching. I got a coaching certification um, that kind of – the the direction to coach kind of came out of nowhere. I was soul searching for if I'm not supposed to be a scientist, what am I supposed to do? And it dropped in on a, on a run one day through a podcast I was listening to. And I heard spirit say, do that, be a coach. And literally came back and, and told my husband and ended up enrolling for a coaching program three weeks later. That was like the first part. So I signed up for Dave Asp um, human potential institute coaching program because i loved biohacking i was just really into taking charge of our own health and wellness and kind of how can we hack hack our own health to become the captains of our own ship in charge of our own life um, and so i did that for about a year and i discovered biofield tuning on a you know shift network show that eileen Net was on and I just knew I was like, that is so cool. That feels like for me and, you know, and enrolled in a training course. And, um, and now like I probably, I definitely do biofield tuning as much or more than I coach or, and I've got new programs to combine them um, because I find it a wonderful combination. Um, so yeah. So it's just been, like, I can't quite remember your question, but hopefully I no, answered you did. You it. did. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> that's how I, that's how I ended up doing that type of work. Um, and and I, so, I, I so love it because I'm, I just recently became a, a shift um, network affiliate because two of my previous podcast guests had events. Um, so I said, they reached out and said, would you be, want to be an affiliate and promote it? And I was like, oh, heck yeah, I'll do that. And so I keep sending more, putting out on social media, I come across and I keep finding these wonderful events that I'm like, oh my gosh, I so want to try this. Oh my gosh, I want to sign up for that too. Oh, I want to do this one. Because like you, I just, I'm so drawn to just that, again, that beautiful energy work and um, so much of it on there. Yeah. yeah, people are doing so many cool things. I agree with you. Like, I, it's definitely for me now, like I have to choose carefully um, because there's so many amazing healing modalities. I'm, I'm now training with um, 
Julia Mick to in Breath of Love. So I'm incorporating a breathwork component into the work I do. Um, and that's super powerful. I absolutely love the breathwork component. Um, so yeah, yeah. Beautiful. It's just, yeah. And then, you know, meeting and getting to talk with people like you for my life, for my career, for my job. It's amazing. <laughs> I feel the exact same way. Like I just meet you, this these beautiful souls such as yourself, and you're doing this. I just again, I call it this soul work. Like you're just helping make the world a beautiful place by the healing that you're offering. And I can't think of a more beautiful gift to to give to the universe. So, wow, thank yeah. thank you. And I, you know, my heart is still in environment and and healing the planet. But what I'm now realizing is that actually in order to heal the planet we need to heal the people who take care of the planet <laughs> that they the people need to to heal internally and really um, recognize the perfection and the beauty and the wholeness of each of us and that when we feel that wholeness within then we will that will be the external world will reflect the wholeness that we feel inside so oh. Most definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So is there anything else that you wanted to, to touch upon that we haven't had? A, I told you we weren't going to get to any of the questions. <laughs> 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 beautiful conversations just kind of go where they want to go. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I really feel strongly that one of the one of the pieces that came together for me in this was i lived in my head and i was really bound to my thoughts and my feelings and i didn't know how to you know i'd heard for years like just let go or just be in the moment or these cliches but then we actually don't many people don't know how to do that i didn't know how to do that um, and the teachers that i worked with on worked with a lot of direct awakening teachers like Locke Kelly and Rupert Spira and in subtle energy meditation um, from some ancient practices like called Dzogchen and Mahamudra in Tibetan. And what they really are about is about feeling the natural mind, feeling for ourselves this open, transparent, luminous presence or awareness that we are. Um, and so I love you know, for people listening, like it's a perspective, it's like a foreground background shift. We're so caught in the external world of doing and to, the invitation is to come back into really feeling this luminous presence that you are and learning to live from there. So um, if you feel stuck in that place, I think recognize that that's a place you can shift from and um and there's so many beautiful teachings and practices i have um i have a insight timer channel if you know the meditation app insight timer uh and there's tons of free meditations i have on there that guide people uh into this recognition of their own natural luminous mind and their own wholeness and i really feel like that that the knowing of our being as whole is the first real step to take, you know, and it goes with the healing journey. Like there's the energetic bodily healing journey, but there's also the mind, the recognition of our own mind as whole and yeah, not broken, that we're not broken. There's a place where we're not broken inside. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love the idea of luminous mind, but yeah, there is a place where we're not broken. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, there really wow. is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and really, um, you know, meditation practices can be really even just like glimpses, just short practices. And like I have some of mine are 10 minutes to, to bring you back into this luminous place where we're whole and complete because when we know ourselves as whole then we can we become like i like to say it's like we become the firefighters that are arriving at the fire and we're not all like you know oh my god oh my god there's a fire like nobody you don't want your firefighters showing up that way right right 
we expect them to show up like I'm here, I'm present, I'm ready for action, I'm ready to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. And so, you know, first before you, you know, try to fix others, try to become the firefighter of your own, you know, life, become, find that place of stable ground. And it's, it's there, it's available, it's right here. Um, Just waiting for you to sink back in and discover it. Yes, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't think of a more perfect way to uh, to wrap that all up. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so how do how do people find you, connect with you? So I have my website and all my offerings are on heartmindalchemy.com. And um, that's the name of my business. And um, and like I said, there's you can find links to meditations you can find uh, articles i've written i have numerous articles on medium and then um, my offerings my one-on-one coaching and biofield tuning sessions um and i offer courses periodically i'm in the middle of teaching a course called vibrational alchemy and yeah. i'll probably teach it again in the fall so if you subscribe then you'll get announcements when that comes out awesome all right well holly thank you so so much for being here sharing your story help giving me hope personally (laughs) but yeah just again the beautiful healing work you're doing in the world um just what a gift so thank you thank you so much terry and thank you for inviting me on the show and for everybody listening and i just sending you all and you so much blessings and love and healing um for your journey, you know. Oh, thank you. And I send it back to you as well. So, Mm -hmm. all right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. And remember until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Terry Welbrock again. Just wanted to thank you for listening to the episode today and remind you to visit my website as well as the Academy terrywellbrock.com for the courses but if you go to my website terrywellbrock.com you can sign up for my monthly hope for healing newsletter which is also jam-packed with information and strategies and blog pieces and guest blog pieces and links to shows um, and just a great space for uh, again healing and hope Thanks for, again, being here and being a part of this healing space. I very much appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye.